Hello and welcome back to the Eagle Griffin Games vlog, and this week we'll have part one of an interview of designer Daryl Andrews, then a sneak peek of Railways of the World, Sweden and Australia. We'll then take a look at a new release of Fruit Passion, and give you a quick overview of Cubist in the Eggs from the Vault segment, and then finish off with a game giveaway. But let's first update you on the final 24 hours of the Kickstarter of Illumination and the Road to Canterbury that we've covered in recent weeks. Weeks. In recent weeks, we've highlighted the Kickstarter for Illumination and the Road to Canterbury, and it's in the final 24 hours when this vlog gets launched. Not only has it fully funded, but it's made it into the stretch credits, giving each backer credit to use for the purchase of add-ons, whose prices have recently been lowered as well. Check out the Kickstarter link below and you might even be able to help push the project to the next stretch credit level, giving all backers of $29 or more additional credits to spend. Today we will be interviewing Daryl Andrews, who co-designed the hit game Sagrada in 2017, as well as Speakeasy Blues among others. This design team also designed Gangster's Dilemma, which is an Eagle Griffin game, new release, and is available now. He's collaborated with a variety of designers and industry experts, and when he's not designing games, he can be found cheering on the Toronto Raptors, who of course are playing their games in Tampa, Florida this year, when it's not suspended due to COVID-19. Apparently, Daryl likes dilemmas, and not just those with gangsters. Without further ado, let's welcome Daryl Andrews. Yeah, I got into the board game hobby when I was a kid. I uh, grew up playing lots of, you know, Monopoly, Risk, etc. And then uh, started to discover as I got older that there were more games than these. And uh, even when I was younger, I, I bumped into games like Scotland Yard and thought those were really cool and they seemed different. And then uh, as I got into, you know, my um, kind of college years, then I discovered games like Catan and Puerto Rico and uh, that just, I got hooked. I just loved uh, these games and I started discovering there was way more games than I thought there were. And I was finding these like weird game stores that had all kinds of titles I'd never heard of. And I was recruiting my friends all the time to try out some new game. I'd buy it just reading something online and thinking like, hey, this game sounds cool. It's called Power Grid, you know, like try it with me. And then we'd get hooked and then we'd buy more maps. And, you know, we started just kind of having a, a group that we regularly met together and then and then for me after falling in love with games and starting to check out local kind of board game events and conventions um, I ran into a thing called uh, the Great Canadian Board Game Blitz and it was these little tournaments that happened across Canada and I got really involved with those and met some amazing people and in that process, started to discover that some of the games, they really highlighted the designers and they highlighted especially, they would always do a round that highlighted Canadian game designers. And that made me really deep dive into board games. My advice, uh, if you'd like to design a game, is try it, do it. Um, one of the beauties one of the beauties of board games is it's really accessible. It is very possible for a person to just cut up some pieces of paper, borrow some components from another game. We even have technology like 3D printers and stuff. You don't need to go that far down the line, but whatever inspires and whatever is kind of fun, like try to make it. But my advice is get it out of your head and onto the table as fast as possible. I think it's really important to physically move things around. That's one of the unique things about board games and card games is it's a physical experience. And so get it out of your head, try to make tangible pieces and process and, and moving things around. You might wanna do that by yourself first or with a co-designer. And then slowly, as you're finding the fun and as you're refining the rules, then kind of widen your, your circle and go from the core of just you as designers and start you know, widening the crowd of that. So that might be like, find a few people willing to play test, might be family members early on, but you really need to expand past that and find some people that are willing to be brutally honest and and then play test, play test, play test. And as you play test, you know, be patient, listen, take notes, and then internalize that and, and reiterate. 
find solutions, not necessarily what people tell you, but identify problems and then find ways to make the story, the experience that you want to tell. Well, I mentioned I'm a sports fan. So one of my dream themes would be to make a sports themed game. It could be, you know, being sports agents. It could be stadium management. It could be uh, running a team. Um, I have a few other ideas too, but I would love to do a, a sports themed game. That's one of my dream licenses. Also, I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of cool licenses, but someday, I, you know, I have some bucket list licenses I'd love to work on someday. So we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just uh, keep trying to make games. I really want to make more than anything. I just want to make unique games, beautiful games, accessible games, games that tell um, good stories and also make everyone feel welcome at the table. Uh, I want to make games that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are in the world, um, but you would be willing to to play and share the table and, and have a good time. So that's my focus on what my future themes will be. Railways of the World takes you back to the early days of the Age of Steam as you begin with a locomotive and a vision. From there, you'll attempt to build your railroad network into a vast empire. Coming to Kickstarter in April are three brand new expansions for the Railways series. In the late 19th century, railway expansion across Australia suffered from inconsistent rail gauges. This lack of planning meant that different rail gauges must meet up at a station for passengers and cargo to switch from one line to the next before continuing on their journey. Railways of Australia recreates this dilemma in a grand map of the continent of Australia that is designed to scale from two to six players. Railway expansion to the north continues in railways of Sweden. From the white north, where rail barons may make use of new operations to span the mountainous terrain, to the tight connections of the coastal ferries in the southeast, building rail lines in Sweden can be a costly endeavor. Only the rail baron with the most guile and economic prowess will be victorious in the end as this map features unique opportunities and challenges to players. The Railways of the World universe expands even further with the Rail Barons of the World expansion featuring solo play for many of the existing Railways of the World expansion maps as well as for Railways of Australia and Railways of Sweden. In addition, this expansion features a new Universal Rail Baron deck that can be used with any Railways of the World map. All three of these new expansions will be on the Kickstarter in April. Fruit Passion is the fantastically fruity, full of frivolity, fun family card game that's a quick memory card game for kids and adults alike. The goal of the game is to be the player who collects the most points by using their excellent memory skills. Players are trying to collect sequential numbers of each different fruit type, but they can only collect one sequence of each type. You can collect these sequences in any order you like, but you cannot look at any of your cards once you've collected them. Your aim is to collect cards in sequence of coconuts, papayas, figs, avocados, pomegranates, and pineapples, or even passion fruit. But don't duplicate the numbers you collect or you won't score anything. It plays 1-4 to four players, takes 20-30 to 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 7 and up. And there's a link below to be brought directly to the Fruit Passion product page. In Cubist, you and your opponents are architects competing to build a grand and inspiring new modern art museum, including its interior sculptures. Your building materials are cubes, or more precisely, all of these gorgeous dice. On your turn, you'll be rolling two dice, and these are your raw materials for building your Cubist sculptures. Over the course of the game, you'll be adding these dice to your workroom to try to create and finish installations. And dice adjacent to previous dice have to be a value of one higher or one lower. And if you want to place a die on top, it needs to be the same value. And here we have completed this installation. Not only will these completions give you points at the end of the game, but they'll also give you bonus dice. These dice can be placed in the museum that all players are simultaneously working on, trying to get points by building this, getting two points for each die of theirs there at the end of the game. But you have to watch other players because if someone completes one of the installations before you, well, you're out of luck. You'll need to work on something else instead. <laughs> 
But it's not the end of the world because you might be able to assign dice of the same values and the same quantities to some of these artist cards. And on a future turn, you'll be able to activate this by taking a one from your supply and adding it to your workroom where you're building other installations. You need to find the right time to activate these, like adding a die of your choice to your storeroom before other players possibly beat you out. Because someone else might swoop in with the same amount of dice of the same value or higher, and yours will go back to your supply, and they might be able to activate this on their next turn if someone else doesn't beat them out. So you're constantly trying to decide where to place the dice, what to work on, watching what other players might possibly be working on, possibly focusing on some artist cards for some abilities, and trying to use your finished installations to gain points at the museum. But you're also trying to decide when to store dice for the next round for bigger plans. Cubist is a game of art for 2 to 4 players, ages 7 and up. It plays in 30 to 45 minutes, and it's available now. I just showed you a quick overview of Cubist, and you can win your very own copy. One copy will be given away, and to enter, simply subscribe and comment below. That's it. Now, when commenting, we encourage you to let us know your favorite segment of the vlog this week and what you'd like to see in future vlogs. Now, you have one week from when this video was launched to enter. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's Eagle Griffin Games vlog, and you can click the playlist below to see all past vlogs, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.